Can you imagine if this event had occurred, but instead of it being Donald Trump, it was Barack Obama? I think the news coverage that we would be seeing right now wouldn't be calling for unity. It would be documenting, oh, what's the term they use? Mostly peaceful protests in every major city across North America with the backdrop, of course, of fires and looting. And we would be hearing liberal newscasters make excuses and say, well, this is what happens, this is what happens. And, of course, waggling their high and mighty, holier-than-thou fingers at everyone, but now we see a strange silence. But still, the calls for unity are wildly inappropriate. I'm sure a lot of people like Florida, Maquis, we are so divided now as a nation. We have been divided since we founded this nation. Why do you think there are the Federalist Papers and the Anti-Federalist Papers? Why do you think only 100 years later we had a civil war? Why do you think we have Republican parties and Democrat parties? There's never been a time in our history from its founding where we have been all together, bringing together all ideas under what never happened. It's baloney. Real quick. Join us at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. Next 48 hours, for sure, we're going to have a brand new video. One US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable first 90 days, no questions asked. Trust me, the censorship is going to get worse. The rights that are going to be taken away in the name of unity and in the name of peace are going to make what happened in 2020 seem like amateur hour. Now, real quick, before we get to the meat of this video, I want to clear up a fallacy that's been floating around out there about uh, equating what happened with Donald Trump with what happened to Ronald Reagan. John Hinckley was apolitical. The man who tried to shoot Reagan was, or did shoot Reagan, tried to kill him, wasn't successful, wasn't um, doing so because he disagreed with Reagan's vision for the future or his political sense. He was trying to impress, by getting famous, the actress Jodie Foster. That's all that was about. He was just some, well, unique individual with a very skewed view of the world, but had no dog in the fight when it came to be come to be progressive or conservative or democrat or republican this is just something that's being thrown around out there now it had nothing to do with it now i'd like to share one of my own posts not trying to be too narcissistic here but i think people need to hear this because it's something that is being echoed all across the media right now and it is a trap Earlier today, I put up a post that, as a former United States Army linguist, psychological operator, let me translate MSM speak for you. Whenever you hear, turn down the temperature of our rhetoric. Tone things down. Stop all the divisive language. Be more civil in our discourse. Come together as a nation. This is all code for the Trump assassination attempt is your fault, America. You see, remember mean tweets? Remember mean tweets? Mean tweets from Trump, bad. Mean tweets from the left, tolerable. But one way or the other, what happened is your fault. This is the MSM absolving itself of their filthy, money-grubbing, greedy ways of the last three decades, putting up the most heinous and horrible examples of both left and right in order to keep you tuned in. You see, when the little tiny skirts over at Fox News stopped doing it, they had to find another way tuned in so they could charge massive ad rates to their sponsors. This is laying the groundwork for the removal of freedom of speech, then <clears throat> other rights as well. You know which ones. You see, they had a plan. You see, a lot of people think all the rhetoric was just off the cuff. They had a plan. See, here's what, what they wanted to be reporting to you right now. Well, it uh, brings us no joy to report the loss of presidential candidate Donald Trump to more violence that just has no place. This is a time now when everyone should be thoughtful and reflect on the last eight years and 
begin to tone down our rhetoric so that violence like this doesn't happen again. It really has no place, but there's enough blame to go around for everyone. But now we can look to the future. We can go forward knowing that there won't be any more division. There won't be any more of this uh, hyperbolic type of political activity, and we can just have our uniparty way going forward. That's what they wanted to be saying right now. They want to be wiping their and go, well, whew, you know, nobody wanted this to happen, but I think America, you people out there waggling our fingers, you need to look at yourself in the mirror because this is your, I mean, us here in the media, we're just reporting it. We're just reporting it. We're just, you know, we're here. We're totally innocent. It's really you, America. It's your fault. It's your fault. And as far as rewriting this, the speech, this apparently comes from uh, Trump himself. Whole, quote, whole different speech now. So this is a trap. And how many of you caught the, the logic failure with President Biden? Like, that's a hard thing to do. You see, he, the president in his speech said, we need to lower the temperature in politics after the attempted assassination of Trump. But what's the headline say? Biden addresses nation as authorities search for shooter's motive. Well, wait a minute. If we don't know what the motive of the shooter was, why are we assuming that it's political? Like in the case with Hinckley and Reagan, Jody Foster. Why are we just, the headline says we don't know the motive, but the president says, tone down the rhetoric, tone down the rhetoric, as if he knows what the motive was, as if he knows what was going through that kid's head. Personally, maybe the kid was an incel. A lot of these shooters are incels. Those of you that don't know what incels, involuntary celibate, it's these guys out there that think that they're owed to getting laid and they can't get laid because of one reason or another, and they feel like it's uh, some giant conspiracy against them, so they lash out the world, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can't say they're not. I mean, it's been something that's been very well documented. So whatever the... They say they don't know the motive, but here they say, because we know the motive, uh, here's what you need to do, America. See, America, it's not your fault. It's not your fault, but the greater point I wanted to make actually comes, believe it or not, from a movie. I know this is a very blurry picture. I'm, I apologize. Those of you that remember The Patriot and are going, it's, it was just a movie. There's something to learn from it, though, here. You see, at the very beginning of the movie, it's those of you that are unfamiliar with Patriots about the Revolutionary War. The character on the right, Mel Gibson, Benjamin Martin, is sitting in a room with a bunch of other men having a very um, calm, sedate logical conversation about whether they should go to war with Great Britain or not. And having fought in the French and Indian War, the Benjamin character says, look, I am not going to vote to send young men to war over money. I've been to war. Yes, we don't like taxes. Yes, they're being very onerous and they're being very dictatorial, but I'm not going to risk people's lives over money. And he makes the comment, would you tell me, please, Mr. Howard, why should I trade one tyrant 3,000 miles away for 3,000 tyrants one mile away? An elected legislature can trample a man's rights as easily as a king can. And so it's a thoughtful, heady conversation where he says, look, I'm not going to fight. And because I will not fight, I will not vote to send others to fight in my stead. He had sons and he didn't want to see them die over money either. Now, something happened, though. Would have been a very boring movie without this, of course. Something personal. And this is what ties it together. I'm sure a lot of, what the hell does this have to do with Trump? Something personal happened to the Benjamin Martin character that changed him. See, his eldest son had decided he didn't agree and went off and became a carrier and got caught with intelligence by the British. And they were going to execute him. Now, very strangely, this guy who allegedly had been to war decided unarmed to go get mouthy with somebody who was armed for war and wasn't in a particularly good mood and starts uh, pontificating about the rules of war. A person that we also learn later in the show didn't follow the rules of war himself very closely, not to get too far off here. 
And then something else personal happens to him. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Sitting in a Room, reasonable, let's all talk about it and not go to war, becomes a bloody maniac and puts weapons in the hands of his two minor sons and then goes and hacks men to death in front of his two young sons with a hatchet. One of the guys running away catches a hatchet right across the back of the spine trying to retreat. So much for Mr. Reasonable, so much for I'm not going to kill in the name of money. See, because it wasn't about money at that point. It was personal for this guy. He decides to go put together, you ready for the term? You ready? He goes and puts together a maquis unit, a terrorist unit, and begins conducting attacks on the British. Hit and run, hit and run, go hide in the swamp. Hit and run, hit and run, go hide in the swamp. Attacks. And then, of course, something else personal happens to him. And when his little McKee raids weren't doing the job, he decides, okay, I guess we will ally with a king, just the king of France, because I have a personal vendetta to schedule to settle. Pardon me. I have a personal vendetta to settle, and whatever has to happen to get me to the point where I can kill the guy I said I'm going to kill, that's what I'm going to do. Now, do not, under any circumstances, underestimate how a personal event can change somebody like this. You see, up until now, yeah, they were going to try to put me in jail. Yeah, they were going to try to take my money. They were going to try to, to break me. They were going to try to do all this. But now they shot at the guy. Now they shot at the guy, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we have a speech change, and we have Nikki Haley invited to the convention out of nowhere, and this allegation that we should all now be friends, that we should all have unity, and we should all get together, and uh, what was that, John Lennon or whoever... Uh, forget the song, I guess I probably shouldn't have even referenced it, but trust me, trust me, they are trying to blame you. They are trying to blame you. They're not blaming the media. There's some saying, well, you know, Joe Biden and the left did this, Joe Biden and the left did that, but everybody is talking about, we need unity, we need calmer rhetoric, we need uh, people who aren't so upset about What's going on? The, you have to remember, well, how did Trump come to where he is now? You see, he, come, he came to where he is now. The root of that was the Tea Party. Long, long, long time ago, when Obama got elected, and there was this huge overreach thing called Obamacare. And people were forced to go pay for insurance that they may not have wanted or needed. And it was about government overreach. And about our rights going away. And people are like, I'm not, I don't want my, no, 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 that's not, that's, that's where Trump, Trump's base came from. But now we're being told, no, sorry. Yes, you can express, you just can't be, uh, you can't be upset about it. You can express your opposition to it, but you can't be upset about it. You can't say anything that might harm some, that might, might cause somebody to do something that might cause harm. You can't do that. No, because I mean, this is, you know, unfortunate what happened to Mr. Trump here, but you know, we need to uh, tone everything down, calm down our rhetoric. The, the world, oh, here's my favorite. The world is looking at us for leadership. The world is looking at us for leadership, and we need to set a good example. So no matter how many rights we take away from you, no matter how onerous the taxes are, you need to be reasonable. You need to be calm and sedate and only say unifying things. Because look at what happened when we let you have your freedom to say whatever you wanted. Look what happened. Do you want that to happen again? We don't. We don't want to happen again. It's, it's so, it makes us so sad to have to report it. But, you know, it was the, the heated rhetoric. It was the heated rhetoric that caused this. No, no, it's not some dumbass kid who had access to something he shouldn't have had access to. No. No, it was your heated rhetoric because it's an assumption of motive. 
it's an assumption of motive. How can the president come out and say that we need to turn down the lower the temperature, and Paul, while CNN right here is saying that they don't even have a motive yet? What if the motive came out that this kid was just like there was some in, he's an incel? Maybe some girl broke his heart or something, and he was going to go out, or maybe he had some issue getting. But I guess he apparently had been bullied, and you know maybe he didn't like his dad or mom or something. And he was going to go do something to get back at them, and it was an apolitical thing. The only thing I've heard is like he gave 15 bucks to act blue. A 20 year old gave 15 bucks to act blue, but it was a registered Republican. You know, 15 bucks. 15 bucks makes him some dyed in the wool hardcore Democrat at the age of 20. Eh, not buying that. Not buying that. No, I'm thinking this is probably more tied to the Nashville shooter more than anything else. How many of you have forgotten? the Nashville shooter. I think this might be a little bit more of something that speaks to the mind of youth in general than it does one guy versus another. So I'm just saying, but keep your eyes open because even the most civil of men, go back and watch the Patriot and ask yourself that question. Gosh, this guy seemed so civil and level-headed and um, eminently rational in his discussion with Gates. Oh, but take something from him personally. Take something from him personally. Oh, and then it's all bets are off. Let's go grab up a bunch of weapons and let's go hunt down a bunch of people and let's kill every single one of them in the most bloody, gory way you possibly can. Just saying. I don't, I've never heard anybody point this out about the Patriot when it's, you know, stares everybody in the face. So, once again, I will leave it there, but if you see a change in Trump because of this, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. And I'm going to read this one more time. When you hear, turn down the temperature of our rhetoric, stop all the divisive language, be more civil in our discourse, come together as a nation, it's all code for, darn you Americans, the Trump assassination attempt is your fault. It's your divisive rhetoric. It's the, you know, it's the idea that you think you can just say anything you want to say with no thought to how it might affect someone else and what they might do based on what you said. That's just them absolving themselves. Because when anybody says anything, Usually the only way anybody else ever hears it is because it's on some platform, whether it be Instagram or whether it be Twitter or X or whatever the heck they call it now, or Facebook, or even here on YouTube. You see, there are places out there, that, or the MSM, or the MSM, and they promote it and they amplify it. And they do so not because they believe in what's being said. They do so so they can charge massive ad rates. So they get views. See, Rush Limbaugh was right when he said there are no great moderates in history. The reason we know about the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists is because they were two extremes with no ability to compromise somewhere in the middle. The reason we know, you know about the Civil War in this country is because we had two groups that were extremes that's why it was a brother against brother in that war there were there were two extremes but they did they did they wanted to be reporting this and say look see see what happens see what happens when you have divisive rhetoric see what happens when you don't turn out turn down the temperature on what you say you did this america you did this and we're we're here to tell you now tell you now that we have a solution we have a solution you need to listen to us you know we're, we're going to make sure that this never happens again this, we're going to come together and unify and you know we're going to do comprehensive gun control and we're going to get rid of these weapons of war and because look it, it, it took out your guy it took out your guy i mean you should clearly want you know, want some comprehensive gun control now even trump himself said i think we should take the guns first due process second didn't he? 
take the guns first, just to be safe. Take the guns first and then go through due process. Trump himself said that. That's what they were planning on having to report. Now they're caught. Now they're stuck. So, oh, by the way, by the way, how many of you remember the promise Biden said before he left office what he would do? Biden made one promise before he left office what he would do. What was it? That's right. Ban assault weapons. Go back and look it up. His promise, he said, even if he had to do it by executive order, he would ban assault weapons. And look at what was used to take a crack at Trump. Imagine that. I will leave it there. Thank you, everyone, who's joined us at the Patreon channel. Very, very much appreciate it. Like I said, we're going to have a video over there, and uh, the main content of it, I'm not going to even reference because it's going to be definitely a pay-per-view type of thing. So is it expensive? No. Pennies a day. Pennies. A few pennies a day. A dollar a month. If you sign up for a whole year, it's less than $12. If you sign up for 12 months, it's less than $12. So, God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.